Hi Knights, thanks for joining us. I'm Jayla Wilkes and today is Friday, April 17th, 2020. Here's your UCF Nightly News Update. Dr. Alexander Cartwright is completing his first week as university president. Earlier this week, Dr. Cartwright spoke with student media outlets to introduce himself in an introductory press conference. In just his second day on the job, new UCF president Alexander Cartwright met with student media and introduced himself to several media outlets, including UCF Nightly News. He answered a variety of questions. I think we're going to have to think about how do we do more uh, through a virtual environment um, and how do we do more hands-on virtually. We know it can work. We know that people have done it with uh, surgery. We know certain areas, right, where it's really hard to do. You learn first virtually. Dr. Cartwright also shared his thoughts about diversity on campus, the athletic program, and his motivations behind applying for the presidency. Hi Knights, I'm Jordan Markoff. Kyler Gray and Madeline Mills are finishing out their year as the faces of the student body. I spoke with them to learn more about what this year meant to them. If you could kind of think of one thing that sticks out as a high point from your term, what would you say come, first comes to mind? We rebranded the organization and with that we changed the culture and made it more student-centric and student-focused. You know, when we came in, Madeline and I uh, we're quick to say that we want student government not to be a resource, but the resource. How has it been, you know, finishing out your term now all having to be remote? And we'll do like meetings uh, via live now on Wednesdays. And that's just a way for me and Kyler to get on the call and just be like, what do you guys need? And last week we had 215 viewers in like 10 minutes. That's a way for us to be um, accessible and still listen to what people want. And I think this week we just have more updates of things that we looked into for people and mm -hmm. it's just a way to show that they we care what was one thing maybe that you was on your platform points that um you feel like you're really excited you were able to accomplish and that you saw the energy in the student body the first one that comes to mind is obviously the scooters i mean yes <laughs> i mean that just that blew up it created a cult of scooter riders i mean it's become a recreational activity on campus now this past year we've had a lot of different various issues with UCF administration. How do you feel um, you and Madeline um, dealt with that and how did that affect your term? When we came in, we were told from the beginning, uh, you were coming into one of the most uh, tumultuous times, if you will, in the university's history. We had to rebuild trust with the legislature. And so um, really when we first got in, uh, it, it was, hey, you walked into a burning building and it's your job to extinguish it. You know, it, I think it goes back to that first initial meeting with President Seymour, and he was talking about, you know, he jokingly said to me, he said, well, me and you are both out of here in a year. Let's see all the good that we can do. And closing in on almost our 365 days in office, I am leaving with no regrets, and I'm leaving with a just big smile on my face with all the things that we were able to accomplish. Reporting with UCF Nightly News, Jordan Markoff. You can watch the full discussion on our YouTube channel, UCF Nightly News. According to a press release, UCF has announced that this year's commencement speakers are Shaquille and Shaquem Griffin. The Griffin twins will speak at all virtual commencement ceremonies taking place in two weeks. The twins played together as Knights before both being drafted by the Seattle Seahawks in 2017 and 2018 respectively. That as COVID-19 numbers continue to rise in Central Florida, Nightly News has you covered on its progression. I'll send it over to Jasmine Haynes for today's COVID-19 update. Thanks, Jayla. Here's today's COVID-19 updates in the Central Florida area. In Brevard County, there are a total of 202 cases, increasing the number by 15 since yesterday, seven deaths, an increase of one since yesterday, and 41 hospitalizations. In Orange County, there are 1,135 cases, increasing the number since yesterday by 46, 21 deaths, an increase from two of yesterday, and 187 hospitalizations, an increase of six since yesterday. In Osceola County, there are 388 cases, an increase of 21 since yesterday, five deaths, and six more hospitalizations, increasing the number to 115. In Seminole County, there are 10 more confirmed cases, making the number 310, three deaths, an increase from one since yesterday, and 70 hospitalizations. That's all we have for now. I'll send it back to Jayla. 
The course of the semester, NSM Today has worked to cover countless breaking news stories. Nightly News reporter Kyle Partain talked to NSM's editor-in-chief, Aaron Brocksmith, to review NSM's biggest areas of coverage this semester. Obviously, we have the pandemic that's been so crazy all around and just so much going on. Um, and then after that, um, the presidential search, that's been a huge thing. Um, and then the other is just like all of these faculty changes we've had and interim positions and um, people going in and out of positions. Obviously, Dually was one of the biggest ones, but yeah. So you mentioned uh, the pandemic first. So obviously a lot of different things happening with the pandemic around UCF. Can you just kind of summarize the, uh, the coverage that NSM today has had over COVID-19? Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty lengthy, of course. Um, our first week, we had 150 stories plus published um, just about the pandemic, and it kind of started in spring break, and it was just like all this hectic breaking news and updates, and it's kind of been um, evolving to being more about, um, like, how are people coping? What are people doing? Um, how does this, like, change things for us moving forward and just stuff like that? So we've been covering more, like, breaking news and the cases going up and all of these things into now it being more about like this quarantine and we don't know when it's going to end. And then you also mentioned presidential search. Um, oh, yeah. Can you talk about just the, the development of that and the development of NSM's coverage on that situation? Yeah, we've had, we've had quite thorough coverage in this semester with that. And we're pretty lucky because our, um, our beat reporter, Jane, she covers the administration and she's been covering, she's been to every single presidential search meeting um, and has been covering it all really thoroughly. So obviously it's been a very busy semester and real quick, last kind of a curveball question. How does the future for NSM today look? Oh, geez. It's so hard because this semester has changed everything in terms, because it's so hard for us to cover news and do our jobs remotely because we have such a hands-on um, job. So it's it's hard to say how it's gonna change things moving forward just because we're still dealing with it now. In the Orlando area this week, we've seen our fair share of rain and shine. Let's see what Milan Martinez has to say about our weather forecast this weekend. Thanks so much, Jayla. And actually, before I get into the five-day forecast for you guys, I'm going to give you a quick look at how it is in Orlando right now. Currently, it is 79 degrees with a 65% humidity, and the chance of rain is sitting pretty low at only 20%, plus there's a light uh, breeze coming in at around 10 miles per hour. And for tonight, actually, it will be mostly cloudy with a low of 70 degrees and winds at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now let's take a look at your five-day forecast so you can actually plan lockdown activities. Uh, we're going to see for Saturday, the high is a very warm 86 degrees with a low of 70 and a 70% chance of rain with a mostly cloudy sky. So you might want that umbrella for Saturday. But for Sunday, however, it's going to spike into the low 90s with a high of 92 for you all. The low will be 73 with a 30% chance of rain for that day, and it will be partly sunny. Monday's high is also 86, but the low is a cool 68 degrees. I know, throwing us off a bit there. It will be mostly cloudy with a 70% chance of rain. Tuesday, however, makes a great day to be outdoors. The high sticks to the mid 80s at 84, but the low is a reminder of cooler times at 63 degrees. It will be mostly sunny with no rain forecasted, but you know, it's Florida, who knows? Wednesday's high is looking to be around 85 degrees and mostly sunny with the low of 69 degrees. If you plan on going outside, remember to maintain social distancing. And now that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoy your coming week and please stay safe. Now let's go to Chris for sports.
Hey Knights fans, I'm Chris Wolf, and here's your UCF Nightly News Sports Update. The NFL Draft is almost here and we have two prospects from UCF that could make some noise in the NFL Draft. First we have wide receiver Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis is coming off of one of the best seasons in UCF history, breaking the school record for most receiving yards in a season and he also had 10 plus touchdown catches. At the NFL Combine, he ran a 4-5-4 40-yard dash, but maybe the most impressive thing at the Combine was his hands, which was, that was very impressive. He caught every ball that came his way, and because of all that, his, his draft grade could be anywhere between maybe a second round and a fourth round pick, and if he's in the right situation, he could become a starter even year one, potentially. And next, we have defensive back Navelle Clark. Navel Clark, has been he's, he has been improving every year he was at UCF. In his senior year, he made one of the all AAC, all AAC teams, and he was second in the conference and pass, de and pass defenses. And at the combine, he one of his best drills was the tw was the three cone drill. He ran a six eight eight on that, which then that also ranked third out of all the cornerbacks. And he potentially could be a late a late round pick, late like late draft pick. And I think if he's in the right situation, he could make a roster, maybe make a little bit of an impact in his, in his year one, but he it could be a development developmental thing for Clark. And that's all we have for sports. If you want more draft coverage, make sure you tune in to the Hitting the Field Draft Show, which is on Thursday, April 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and that will be streaming on the on their YouTube page at Hitting the Field. And now, back to Jayla. That's all for right now. This is the final newscast of the spring 2020 semester. All of the current Nightly News team members are graduating from the program this year. Some of us have been a part of Nightly News for the better part of a year now, so this is bittersweet, especially because we aren't celebrating this moment in the studio together. On behalf of the entire Nightly News team, we would like to thank Professor Brunson, Professor Coronado, Dr. Kite, and of course, Dr. Brown and Yant for everything they've done to guide us in the right direction. The next Nightly News crew will be taking over and working in the fall. Thanks so much for tuning in to Nightly News. I'm Jayla Wilkes and have a great day. Oh man. Yo, it's, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's dad. Man. It's dad. How's it going, guys? Oh, man. Stay out of trouble, kids. Oh, oh. oh what is this? What the fuck? Dim Dale, Dim Dale, come on down this weekend to the Dim Dale, Dim Dale. <laughs>